Because we know people, these, some of these people are so smart, they will run, write computer programs to try to hack into your passwords. And so I'd have to generate seriously random passwords for even just simple Twitter accounts so people would not break in to the characters' accounts. That, 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 that's actually more common in alternate reality gaming, are these really smart people breaking into your systems than actually playing in bad faith, is what I, I would say. I have a comment on that one. Uh, the day before we launched at Sundance, and the, one of the biggest components of the pandemic was the security of the system. Um, somebody hacked into it and, and found out some information about it and started posting it on all the forums. So we had to quickly go and, and, and make some changes and get back on track. But yes, that's a great comment. So I would agree with the other two ladies. Um, it's not so much bad faith, it's pure enthusiasm yeah. and a complete competitive nature for those who play this type of alternate reality game. And, and let's be very honest, it's a very niche group that actually gets that into the game, which is why there's always an argument within the community as to how feasible is this, right? Because commercially speaking, how much of your audience is going to get that engaged versus how much just want to consume good content. So there's always this balance about, and I think we touched on it in our talks, about how do you design this so that it, it satisfies that most rabid player who constantly needs that content feed, who constantly needs the challenges they need to uncover. They need to be first to the forum and to the community to introduce that new piece of content or I crack this puzzle. And how much do you put out there that just serves that passive audience who's happy to watch what's going on in terms of what the community is doing and in terms of what the story is doing. So my advice there is design for all three, mm -hmm. right? Don't make it so that you have to be an active player to be able to consume the content. There are some red herrings out there to get them onto other tracks. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Uh, so, um, one of the interesting um, arenas in which uh, media is merging and, and moving from platform to platform, sort of the whole you know, core of transmedia, uh, is in fandom and fan fiction at large. Um, and of course, one of the tenets there is uh, gifting and non-monetary uh, exchanges and such. And I'm wondering, as professional producers, uh, how you all are dealing with that, and, and if you could add any perspective for us on, on how your work intersects with fandom at large. When, when you say or, or transmedia, the use of uh, and merger of, of, uh, of the media platforms in, in fandom. Um, I, I think I understand your question correctly, and, and if I do it, um, I would say for for myself as an indie and non-profit or social cause producer, um, a lot of times we see exchanging of um, talents or services. Um, so does, would that be so and, and like a collaborative consumption yeah. sort of concept yeah. where um, money doesn't change hands, but the project still gets done? So we, we, we have done a bit of that before to lower the cost for the, the creative project. Was that a question about 
co-creation, or is that a question about how do you introduce the, the concept of rewards within a transmedia experience or story? So, um, Esther, I, I would think that your perspective, uh, particularly coming from a, a corporate uh, uh, standing there, is probably the most um, diagonal to fandom at large, with, with gifting and non-monetary exchange of content and uh, creative expression. But I, I'm wondering at large, and, and I, this is probably a dead end question now, but if there's anything else anybody wanted to, to uh, it's, it's sort of the dipolar opposite of uh, uh, creating the game for, uh, to post it on the store and collect your $1.99 uh, for it, where people are really doing distributed uh, creation of, of media and moving it from platform to platform. Uh, kind of throwing IPR right out the window as they go. You're, you're talking, it sounds like what you're talking about is co-creation with your fans and allowing them to have room to write into the narrative, if not into the canon. And that's a big debate and that there's one, one that's been going on for several years from a legal perspective. From a brand perspective, you're right. Um, anything that was created within the, the world that we created for Pi Theory became essentially, it was created under Creative Commons, so yes, owned by Sun, but you could take those derivatives, they put it out there, and you can create based on it, but you couldn't monetize on it for a personal gain. So you couldn't take their assets and create t-shirts and then sell them uh, on Cafe Press or something like that. Um, there are really interesting things happening in co-creation right now, and one of the things that comes to mind for me is um, Clockwork, Clockwork Watch. Clockwork Watch, yeah. Um, so they have this really interesting um, steampunk story going on that's created by Yoms. Yomi Ayani. And uh, recently there was a post going around by Haley Moore, who is a transmedia artifact designer and creator. She created a subset of story underneath Clockwork Watch, and she put that through the Kickstarter program, and essentially she's creating an offset of stories that's based inside of the Clockwork Watch universe, where she's creating art artifacts around that story. So that's something where she's benefiting from it as a co-creator within the universe and she's according to... Marketing for the other ones. Exactly, but she's marketing for clockwork and it's all part of the universe, but this is something that another colleague and I, Scott Walker, talk a lot about from LA because we do think that there is an opportunity within the story world communities that we build where there could be a shared revenue, you could create a marketplace where people would create artifacts within that story world to share with one another, barter with one another, or sell. And there could be models built around that in terms of a rev share, um, or it could be sort of a rent of some sort within that marketplace of that world. Um, and there would have to be some sort of curation system so that you don't have a bunch of people selling junk as well, but something that maintains the integrity of the world um, and the story and the characters. So I think that there's a lot of development there, and I think it's exciting, and definitely Clockwork Watch is one of those areas where I think some interesting progress is happening. So definitely we can continue talking and talking, but actually time has definitely run out. <laughs> and there's still a few more items this evening before we completely go for networking and our ARG. So I really, really want to thank all of you for sharing your amazing story world with us. Uh, and all your knowledge, and definitely it's these ladies up there, a wealth of knowledge in a lot of uh, diverse trans media story worlds, and a lot of people you know. <laughs> so wrap up, got a couple, a couple announcements. Thank you, Justin, Jennifer. Then uh, we know how to deal with it. So we actually are looking for some volunteers, um, and hopefully one day beyond volunteers. But right now we're looking for a social media and PR person, looking for more sponsorship relationships and uh, people to help us have help us with this, these events. 
We've been doing them on a monthly basis. Uh, we're not going to do one in December, uh, but we're doing uh, them almost every month. Our next one is actually on the 28th of January, and in a second I'll show you that. But before that, our actual, well, we'll start with this one and we'll go back to the uh, 28th. But on the 1st of February, at least you want to, do you want to come talk about this? Come on up. We announced it last month, but we actually changed the date. Um, it's but February 1st. The final date. It's the final date. We're not moving it anymore. Hello, everyone. Anyone knows what a hackathon is? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Dig it. So a hackathon is a format of event where you gather people for usually a weekend and you get them to prototype stuff for a whole weekend. Um, this is usually something that happens in the tech world. There's some game jams and we are organizing Startup Weekend Transmedia, uh, the very first of its kind in San Francisco at Perisoma, a really cool co-working space. Um, it's going to happen on the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of February, um, and people are going to get to prototype transmedia projects or stories about the topic, the city. And tonight, we're happy to announce that the city and county of San Francisco is actually supporting the event and will award a special Urban Innovation Award to people who have a specific um, civic, try to solve a specific uh, civic or social uh, matter in the city. So, so yeah, we're really proud to announce this and we'll have a lot of announcements coming up. So follow us on uh, Twitter at uh, SW Transmedia um, and on, you can find us on our Transmedia SF website, all the information and we'll be in touch and we hope you can participate and join us. Thank you. Great. Uh, five days before that, we're going to have Jonas Sachs winning the Story Awards. If you haven't read this book, it's amazing. Uh, he talks about empowerment marketing versus uh, the marketing as it is right now, the status quo. And if you actually go to winningthestoryawards.com, there's a wonderful, one of the chapters are, is animated because Jonah's also the uh, founder of um, uh, Free Range Studios, a cause a branding agency, really great, from Berkeley and Washington, D.C. Uh, and we have three announcements. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go ahead? Oh, sure. Yeah. So one of our members, thanks everybody, thanks everybody for being here. Uh, one of our members is launching a new iPhone game. It's actually going to be a transmedia world. Uh, it's starting to launch on iOS and we're currently looking for beta testers. So it's a kind of a mashup between Boggle and Scrabble and crosswords. Uh, it's got a story overlay that has Celtic myth and adventure. Uh, so anybody interested in being a beta tester, uh, please come and see me. And we'll be launching an Indiegogo campaign soon, too. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Jennifer Kincaid. I'm launching on Kickstarter next week um, my new coloring book project. It's a co-creation opportunity on Kickstarter. And then it's going to, after the co-creation opportunity and the Kickstarter campaign ends, it's going to be a crowdsource art project where people receive this coloring book and they color it in. Um, here's a piece I did called I Love My Day Job at the Bank. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so uh, what's, what, I'm, what I'm offering on Kickstarter for rewards is um, naming, opportunities, naming opportunities within the book where you can, you can get your... Um, phrase or your name or your um, or your dedication there's lots of things that are going to be going on um, please feel free to uh, contact me at artful artfulalphabet.com and <laughs> thank you Beth and uh, I'll make sure that I uh, get out a book to you to be distributed it's going to be distributed in digital form and in hard copy for different levels of the reward and uh, in digital form wide wide uh, distribution um, culminating in an art exhibition. I hope that you come and participate. I really appreciate um, everybody's contributions and it's going to be a great great fun culminating in an exhibition and a big party in San Francisco so all of you can come. Thank you. Great. And Justin? Hey guys, so some of you may know me but uh, we're working on this project and it's a board game. So I don't know who likes board games and being giant monsters smashing San Francisco, but if you do, <laughs> I saw hands go up. maybe 
Maybe a hand? Um, we're looking for testers, and so uh, hopefully by the end of this week we'll have some printable versions of the game that you can just take it home and play with your friends and let us know if it works, if it doesn't work, and it's all part of this kind of bigger world that we're putting together, but uh, just email me at ismashsf at gmail. So, our final this evening, before we let you go back to, um, to uh, drinking and eating the rest of the food. Well, you can do this while you're drinking. And you can do this while you're drinking. Want to explain? Okay. All right, so just, I know some people aren't familiar with alternate reality games, so I actually designed one to be played in 15 minutes, okay? So, call this phone number. Okay, now if everyone calls a phone number all at the same time, it's gonna be busy. So you may need to kind of space it out over the next like five, 10 minutes. Call this number, do what you're asked to do, and you'll have a really kind of fun experience, all right? It's, it's an experiment, it's run uh, primarily through the software platform Conductor, uh, which is uh, what I'm working on right now. Um, but you will be asked to take part in a covert op tonight in 15 minutes. All right. Anyway, enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, and we'll see you back on the 28th. Uh, we will probably launch that in about a week, but you'll know that because we are very vocal. And this is Transmedia. Steph, I also wanted to thank, because this is our last event of the year, to thank some of our amazing uh, people that are part of Transmedia. Steph. Beth is my co-founder. Uh, Justin Oathant. Uh Where is Jim? Jim, Nikki, Elise, and all the other people who have been supporting us this year. This has been our first year, and we're coming back in January with a lot of events for you, a lot of different experiences beyond just this meetup. So you know, look look on your uh, emails because we will be sending them, <laughs> and have a great night tonight. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.